Martin rips it to Marshall. That's no good. Rebound taken by Markowski. And Nebraska can lead for the first time with a three. Suddenly game pressure on Iowa. And the Hawkeyes invite pressure. They say it's a privilege. They've got what they want right now. Hawks too strong. Well defended by Kate Martin, staying vertical, disciplined without a foul. Clark wants the ball. She wants to score. She misses rebound for Cox. Shelley has hunted shots today. That's deflected and taken by Stokey, who's fouled. That's just three on Nebraska in the fourth quarter. Ball protection so important in these tight moments, but let's look at these three-point shots for Nebraska. The freshman, Logan Nisley, knocking it down. How about the center, Alexis Markowski? Another one for the three-point shooting has certainly picked up a bit here in the fourth quarter. We are coming down to one minute to go, and Caitlin Clark on the ball. It's Martin. Front iron. And another quick shot. A quick shot with the lead with probably about 20 seconds on the shot clock. The record that matters right now is in the bottom left rather than the top left. Iowa 11 and 1 in the Big Ten, but threatened in a major way on this Sunday afternoon in Middle America. 20 to 8 in the fourth quarter. So, Kim, this Nebraska possession now, what do you want that to look like? I still like the looks of when they're going into some ball screen action with Alexis Markowski and Jazz Shelley. I would maybe isolate those two on one side, but Natalie Potts has also been really strong as well. She's got to be ready for maybe a, a dump down, but she's been really getting downhill. So I would say maybe one of those two options have been kind of their surefire ways to score here in the second half. To your point, Natalie Potts has eight points in this fourth quarter. One timeout left for Nebraska, three for Iowa, and that certainly comes into play under a minute with the possibility to advance it into the front court off the timeout. But here we go. Miss Lee, the freshman, to Jazz Shelley. Into the post it goes, Markowski. Shelley, a fight for the ball. Shelley! That's good! Shelly, Nebraska. This place is electric. What a big time knockdown to the graduate student from Australia. So they tried to get it into Markowski scrambling here. Janice Shelley has to make a play. That was not an easy shot off of the dribble, trying to make something happen. Absolute cash, the kick out from Markowski. She was double. They give her a ball screen. They don't step up in time. They go under the screen. Jazz Shelley knocks down her fifth three. None bigger than that one to give her team its first lead of the afternoon. She's had 10 threes against Iowa this year in two games. So all that Jazz gives Nebraska a one-point advantage. And here's Caitlin Clark. And it looks like they may look. A shot from forever is no good. And the rebound for Nebraska. I was just about to say, it looks like they may try to run it down a little bit to get the final shot. But then that was not the case. An early shot, a deep shot. Trying to get Caitlin Clark to be the hero. What a stop and rebound for Nebraska. Caitlin Clark has not scored in the fourth quarter. And if Iowa loses this game, you'll wonder if maybe they could have gotten her more looks. But this game pressure built like a storm cloud in June here in Lincoln. Yeah, and now I was going to have to foul to keep this game alive. Shot clock is turned off. It's a one-point. 
one game. And Nebraska looking for a signature win that so many are watching here on Super Bowl Sunday as the drumbeat continues for first place. Iowa and Ohio State tied at 11 and 1 in the tiebreaker right now to the Buckeyes here. Yeah, and then you see that three way tie for the fourth spot between Michigan State, Penn State, and Nebraska. Nebraska is certainly a team that is in the mix to get back to the NCAA tournament and a win over the number two team, which probably put them in that bracket. You'd have to imagine so. <laughs> 2020, Nebraska has not beaten Iowa. That was February of 2020. To start this nine game run, tough inbound. Shelly's got it. Jack Shelly swatted at and fouled. Marshall didn't think she made contact, but it was right in front of us. Uh, yeah, that was interesting because Iowa was clearly giving it a chance to get a steal out of the trap, and I didn't think there was any contact yet. It literally right in front of us. I, I don't think they fouled yet. They weren't trying to foul yet. I don't think they fouled, yet a foul was called. You're all over it. That was an anticipation call. Shelly to the free throw line. And, and they had her trapped in a really good spot to try to get a steal out of it. You mentioned it, Jazz Shelly. Some of these players who've been through it at Nebraska finally seeing it. Nebraska also has a foul to give here, Jason, so they could let a couple ticks off. They just cannot foul in the shooting motion. Especially on a blue circle. Get this thing in, and they do. Stalking late cuts in for two. Nebraska. Shelly, she's fouled. Nebraska was looking for a five second call there. It was close. Wow. What an effort by Hannah Stolke to get to the basket at what must have been a four and a half cut. 4.99. Right. I think just a hard cut finds a gap. Big shot. Kate Martin on the inbounds. Looks like they're trying to get something on the perimeter. A couple options are a no go. Hannah Stolke cutting right to the block. fans who counted 1-1000 to 5-1000 <laughs> there, but that is certainly not reviewable. And a timeout, the final timeout of regulation with a three-point lead on the board. So same idea as last time, maybe look for Caitlin Clark, maybe Martin. Yeah, same idea. And, and they had Kate Martin inbounding on that last one. So if she inbounds again, don't sleep on her passing it in, trying to catch the defense, leaving and getting it back. You do still have plenty of time if you need that quick release, too, like they just had to do with Hannah Stolke. You talked about the stakes for Nebraska, and they are a mile high in this game. The Cornhuskers against the top 50 have four wins. They are a nine seed, according to Autumn Johnson right now. This would really cement their case. Yeah, I mean, this would cement them to be in and then really raise the seeding profile a lot. But look, can we go back to just how clutch Jazz Shelley yeah. has been at the free throw line? Four in a row, one of the top free throw shooters in the Big Ten, 86%. Four huge makes. Remember, Iowa is out of timeouts. Nebraska has a foul to give. Moriarty, the defense, it's into Martin. Shelley is on Clark, trying to deny, and Clark is met and fouled by Potts. So there's the foul to give, 9.5 to go. Yep, it's a smart foul. They got plenty of time to tick off. There was no question that Caitlin Clark was not going into a shooting motion, but now the next foul would be free throws, would be the bonus. Inbound, tough catch for Martin. Caitlin Clark with five for the tie. It's no good. Rebound down mid lane. Out to Martin. No! And a record crowd watches a historic upset.
only did they watch the upset, they participated right now. Coming from the crowd onto the floor. I, I really can't believe what we just witnessed. Jason, Nebraska trailed by 14 in the fourth quarter. They outscore Iowa 27 to 10 to win this game. And Amy Williams, the former walk-on at Nebraska, whose parents got snowed in for her senior night. Her brother came in a ball cap and jeans to walk her out onto the floor. And that young lady, Alexis Markowski as well, finally gets her first win against Iowa 